good morning. Is everybody ready to work? Welcome to God's
Take me on a bed 
what? I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. You're the only one. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. You're the only one that ever really makes me want to change. Sing it out. I don't want to abuse your grace.
so thankful that we felt the nudge to go to church this morning, Lord, to hear your word, to strengthen our relationships, and of course, become closer to you. We ask all of this in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to 2023. Remember the days when you used to have to write out checks and it took you about six months to get the year right? Little kids don't understand what that means, young generations. But uh, listen, I'm glad that you have joined for just a little while here as we kick off 2023. And uh, I'm glad to be a part of this spiritual journey that we're going to take together in this brand new year. And looking forward to what God's going to do. Now, I, I, I'm a, you need to know something about me. I'm a little bit strange in that... There's probably multiple ways, uh, but in the fact that I love Mondays. Do you? Do you, you like Mondays? I, I, I like Mondays. I like the beginning of a new week. I, I like new seasons, and uh, I, I like New Year's. I, I like the, the beginning. I like the new beginnings of things. I'm always about new beginnings, and uh, it's just something that just wakes me up, and it gets me excited. It makes me, uh, makes me want to tackle the day or the new week or the new month or the new year. And, and so, you know, when most people start off the new year, a lot of times we think about health issues. We think about, I want to lose weight. I want to get in better shape. I, I, I want to be able to trim up just a little bit. I want to be able to exercise a, a little bit. I want to eat better. And, and all those areas are good. And, um, but the thing is about those is that they don't, they're, at best, they're, they're temporary. So what I want to talk about today is we look into 2023. I, I'm not dismissing those ideas. I, I just want to introduce another idea that I want you to think about, and it's about your lifestyle. It's about the, the legacy of, of your life, the, the impact of your life, if you will. What kind of influence are you going to have in 2023 that will not just be temporary, but will outlive you even and outlast even your lifespan? What, what about the decisions that you make that, that can impact forever? Now, what I want to talk about today is if, if it's done correctly, with intentionality, what we talk about today, as we start off this brand new year, really can, can impact your entire lifespan, getting intentional about the life that you and I lead. Now, a big part of my intentional journey over the last several years has been learning how to ask better questions. I found that the, the key to growth, the, the key to really unlocking all kinds of things in our life is learning how to ask better questions questions, to ask questions, period, but to, then to dive in and ask even better questions. Because what questions do is they provide a fuel for reflection. They, they get us to think about things. And we don't, just, we don't just assume, we don't just kind of keep kicking the can down the road. They become like a catalyst for, for action. And this time of the year, on this day, and, and this next week, and even, even in the next couple of weeks, as, as we kick in, into the new year, it gives us a chance to ask some questions that can really 
literally change the direction of our life. I don't want to overstate it, but I mean, I questions are powerful that way. Think about Jesus. Jesus wasn't just all about talking and teaching. A lot of what he did was he asked questions that got people to think, that made them kind of sit back a little bit and challenge the assumptions that they had been living under. See, a lot of times we use content and we use information and we use data and we, and we almost like overload and we talk, talk, talk. Oftentimes they even cover up for our weaknesses and our, and our shortcomings. Think about how when, when people, sometimes people when, when they get nervous uh, and they don't know the answer or something, they just start talking a lot. Talk, 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 talk. And they, and they use it kind of as, as a smoke screen. Now, the thing about questions is the, the right questions aren't, aren't safe. There's something that reveals a vulner, there's a vulnerability attached to, to questions. They, they cause us to dig down deeper than just staying on, on the surface level of things. And that's why questions are the key to unlocking new discoveries. And, and so for many people, with the pace of life that we live, we probably spend more time looking forward than we do looking backward or even looking at where we are today. Now, uh, a couple years ago, um, a mentor of mine um, challenged me with some questions, and he, and he shared some questions that I, I want to adapt a little bit. I want to share with you today as we start this new year. And they're really, they can be. I know it's a little bit of an overstatement, maybe a little bit of a game, a little bit of a, of a cliche, but they really can be game changer questions as we start a new year or as we start the new beginning of, of anything else, is to take some time and really to dive in deep and, and to reflect. And so what I want to give you is I want to give you some questions that look backwards, that help you to reflect back, four questions that will look back. I want to give you a question that you can ask about where you are today, right here, January 1st, 2023. And then I want to give you some questions as we, to help you to, to reflect and, and to think forward as well. Now, so let me just dive right in. If you've got notes and you want to jot some of these down and put them into your phone or your iPad, uh, I, I want to give you these things. Because the power of reflection is, as I teach about growth to, to leaders and business leaders uh, all around, one of the principles uh, John Maxwell talks about is the, the law of reflection, which says that pausing allows growth to catch up with us. See, we keep moving, 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 and sometimes we don't allow the lessons that we've learned to catch up with us. So sometimes you got to hit pause and you got to let growth catch up with you. Like what, what, and that's what reflection does. So let me give you the first question. This is looking back. And question number one is, what did I accomplish? When you look back over 2022, ask yourself, what did I accomplish? What, what were the wins? What were the things that, that you look back and you say, man, that was, that was good. That, that, was a, that was a good thing. What went right? Hi I want you to highlight the positive things. So this next week or maybe even later on today, just take some time and start reflecting back what went right this last year so that you can build on that for the future. And It's okay to give yourself some time to celebrate. I, I think that there's this humility, almost a false humility sometimes, where we, we don't want to stop, we don't want to celebrate, we want, don't want to think too, too highly of ourselves. And I'm just giving you permission to pat yourself on the back and just to say, that was good. That was a good thing. That was a good investment of my time. That was a good investment of my gifts or my energy or my, of my resources. That was, you can take pride in a job well done. So what are those things over this last year that went right? You said, that was a good decision I made. That was a good step that I took. Because what that does is it enables us, like I said, to build on those accomplishments rather than just reinventing the wheel over and over. You gotta pull out what, th this was the good thing. So give yourself some time to bask in the win. What were the events? What were the activities? What were the relationships, of the investment of time, of your talent, that, that moved the needle forward for you? Andy Stanley said that we have to understand what's going right in our lives or in our teams, in our organizations, in our churches. Because if we don't know what it looks like when it's working right, how are we going to know what it looks like, how to fix it when things go off the rails? So take some time and evaluate what are the things. Just get some bullet points. 
What are some big yay God moments? Some, hey, that a boy, that a girl kind of moments in your life over the last over the last 12 months? That's question number one, looking back. Here's question number two. With those things, ask yourself, what did I learn? What was the takeaway? What, 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 what was the fruit that I pulled off of those events, off of those things that happened? What's the gold that I can extract from the mine that were those experiences? Listen to what the, in Proverbs 1, verse 5, it says, Let the wise listen and add to their learning. I like that a lot. That, that, that requires us to pause, to evaluate, to reflect, and then to pull the richness out, pull the gold out, pull the fruit out. What is it that I learned this last year? There is power in reviewing something. After you have an event, I encourage people all the time, after, after you listen to a message, after you listen to a podcast, after you watch a movie, after you read a book, after you go to a seminar, uh, after something happens in your life, within 24 hours, you should be asking, what did I learn? What did I learn? What am I going to apply? And how am I going to pass this along to other people? And we'll get to that in a second. But, but there's value in reviewing shortly, right afterwards. Don't, don't wait forever, but pull, pull the gold out right away. Otherwise, if you don't focus on it immediately, what ends up happening is it just gets lost. And now you just have a bunch of experiences over time. You know, a, a, year, a year before we had our house fire, uh, uh, some friends of ours, had a house fire themselves. And I remember standing outside on their sidewalk looking at their house burning down. And, and I remember speaking with, with, uh, with her uh, sometime later. And, and you know, she, I was just helping her to think that you're, you're, they're going to have some lessons that you're going to learn out of this time. There, there's, there's lessons that you learn right away. There's, there's lessons that you'll learn six weeks later. And there's lessons that you'll learn six months later. And there's lessons that you'll learn six years later. You know, uh, uh, we learned lessons three hours after our fire. It's been three years now. We learned lessons three weeks later and three months later and, and three years later. There's still things that I feel like I'm still pulling out the lessons. Like, here's what I learned during that time when all of our life just got upended. There is value in the discipline of pulling the experiences the learnings out of those experiences. You've probably heard this expression before that experience is the what? The best teacher. Experience is the best teacher, but that's not true. It's not entirely true. There's a missing component on it. The experience itself does not teach. It's the evaluation of that experience. That's what teaches. It's the learning from that. So what did you experience and what did you learn? That's question number two, evaluating. What, what, did I, what did I learn? All right, here's question number three. Question number three is, who did I lead? Who did I influence this last year? Now, this, this starts to get into that other thing. Not only what did I learn, but what did I pass on to somebody else? And I want to challenge you to start asking that question on a regular basis. Who, who am I... Who am I building into? Who am I leading? Who am I influencing? Who am I investing in? But when you look back over this last year, who, who is it that you invest in? Did, now, now listen, to, to lead others well, you got to lead yourself well. And you know that the hardest person to lead is ourselves. So you can ask that of yourself. How, how well did I lead myself? But I, I want you to take it to that next level. And, and, and did I lead my family well? Did I lead my kids well? Did I lead my friends well? Did I influence them well? Did I influence the people that, that I work with and I hang out with all the time? Did I influence them well? See, our highest goal should be to impact and to influence other people. Not, not just to kind of do your own little thing and, and not, not ever interact with anybody else, not, not let anything ooze off into anybody else. We, we should be influencing and impacting other people all the time. Remember what Jesus told us? He said, these things that you've seen me do, you're going to do even greater things. Now think about that. Jesus said, you're going to do even greater things than me. It, I think it's what, what Paul was talking about when he wrote to young Timothy, who by all accounts was, was a younger person, had a lot of reasons to probably feel like I'm not going to make any impact. No one's going to listen to me. I'm not going to make much difference in this world. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, 
Listen to what Paul said to young Timothy. He said, these things that you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, I want you to entrust them to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. And in that one verse, you have four generations. These things that you've heard from me, I want these things that you've heard from me, I want you to entrust to reliable people who will entrust them to other people. So my question for you, who have you influenced this last year? Who are you intentionally impacting? And now I've challenged everybody before Christmas to engage in a one, one, one challenge. Now you can continue this on. Some of you have already told me you're going to keep it going. You've got, I've got it going on my phone. It rings every day at one o'clock to remember to pray for one minute for one person. Who am I influencing? Who am I impacting? The, the Bible teaches us that our role is not to be a reservoir of God's goodness and God's grace, but to be a river that it flows through. So my question is, who are you investing in? Who, who did I empower so that they could take the ball and they could run with it and then they could pass it on to somebody else? You know, years ago, I was introduced to this idea of the rule of 10. And I, you may be hearing me talk more about this, this this next year, but I want you to start thinking about it now. Who are just 10 people in your life? Now, you, can't, you can know a lot of people, have a lot of acquaintances, but, but who are 10 people that you are engaging and in re- regularly investing in? and building into, building qualities and characteristics into them, and, 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 and building and, and investing in them. People who are teachable, people who are hungry, people who, are, who, who value other people too, people who are growth conscious, pe- people who are, who are open to, to growing. Those are the people. Do you have 10 people like that? Start, start saying, God, would you show me the people that I could invest in this next year? All right, here's the next question. The next question is, what held me back? As you look backwards, you say, what is it this last year that held me back? My my friend Rich Lohman always says, "What what is it that slowed you down, got in the way, or all but stopped you from reaching your goals? What is it that got in the way, slowed you down, or all but stopped you? You... You have to identify what are those roadblocks? What are those detours? What are those rabbit trails that you chase down? What are those shiny objects? What, what are those squirrels that you went chasing off into the bushes that, that maybe got in the way of you accomplishing what you wanted to accomplish? This, that question enables us to define and put up on the table those things that are diminishing our return. It's like doing, if you've ever done in an organization, a SWOT analysis, S-W-O-T. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your opportunities? And what are your threats? What, what are the things? You, you got to take some time to evaluate. What are the things that got in the way? What, what are things that tripped me up? What are obstacles that, that I allowed? What are, what are extra noises and voices and detours and distractions that I allowed to come in that slowed me down, got in the way, or all but stopped me from getting to where I wanted to be? Now that becomes invaluable as you start looking forward. You can understand, like you got to understand what are the problem areas. And that's one of our hardest jobs, I think, is to define reality, is to say, listen, I want to be honest with myself, and I just want to say, this is what's getting in the way. This is something that, that i got to pay attention to. I can't ignore this anymore. You know, this fall, we did, at Journey, we did a, a church-wide survey, a church-wide assessment. And it brought back some valuable data that the leadership team has been looking at. And uh, as we've been, been consulting on this and trying to figure out what, what, what are those areas that we said, we've we got to pay attention to some of these things. That, there's value in that. Like what, what are things that are getting in the way? And you can't just say, just kind of blow smoke at yourself and just pretor- pre- pretend that everything is all warm and fuzzy and unicorns and rainbows and you know puppy dogs and... And sunshine, I mean, not not everything is good. So what are those things that got in the way, slowed you down or all but stopped you from from moving forward? You need to do that as a individually. We're trying to do that together as a journey church. Now, there there may be some external reasons, things that you couldn't control. But I want you to also look at what are the internal reasons as well, because we're so quick to push the blame on somebody else. So whether, whether you're talking about church growth or you're talking about personal growth, it, oftentimes it's less about things that we do and it's also, 
Oftentimes it's about things that we need to remove, obstacles that we need to get out of our way to clear the path. And some of those obstacles may be ourselves. We get in our own way. So what are those things that are limiting factors to your growth, to, to, uh, to journey's growth as well? It, it, we, things that, that can hold us back sometimes is when, when, when we're not vulnerable. We're not aware of, of those weaknesses. And it's hard. It's hard to look on the inside. And, uh, but if you don't, what ends up happening is those obstacles, they become like a revolving door and they just come back and they hit us again and they hit us again and they hit us again. And at some point you got to say, I got to stop. I got to identify what this is. I have to remove this obstacle so that I can continue forward and where I want to go. All right. So those are the questions looking back. Now here's a question for you to ask about where you are today, January 1st, the beginning of a new year. And it's a gut check question. It's a, it's a heart check question. And it's just simply this. Do I love who I am and what I do? Do I love who I am? Do I love what, what I do? Am I, am I satisfied with my current situation, with my current results, with, with, with the current place that I find myself right now? This is a question that starts to dig in deep into our heart, into our passion, into, into that God calling in our life. It's knowing your why. How, how well do you feel like your life and your actions are in harmony with what God wants for your life? I told you, I, I like Mondays and most people don't because most people don't love what they do. Most people aren't in love with what they invest 40, 50, 60 hours a week or more in. And so they dread Mondays where they got to get back up and they do it. So this is something that we need to ask annually. We owe it to ourselves and to the people that we're trying to influence that we love who we are and we love what we're doing. Because if you stop that, if you stop loving what you do, or you stop loving the people around you, they'll, they'll, they'll start figuring that out. And that's the time you should start to do something different. Life, life is too short. Time is too precious for us to just keep kicking the can down the road, not loving who we are, not loving what we do. Now, these days, I'm probably more in touch with my why, W-H-Y, than at any other time in my life. I'm more regularly and consistently in touch with my why than I ever have been in my life. I'm more intentional about it. I'm less patient about allowing circumstances or obstacles or people to, to pull me in other directions. So we have to pay attention and ask that question daily. We have to ask it annually. We have to ask it weekly even. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to the people in your life. You owe it to the mission that God has called you to to get in touch with whatever God is leading you, get, it, get your life in harmony with that. Okay, now let me turn the corner. Let, let's look at some questions into the future. So there's some questions looking back, questions at looking at today. Now what are some questions as we get ready to look into the future? And here's the first question. It's a tough one. It's the question of, am I willing to pay the price again this next year? Am I willing to pay the price? Am I willing to do what's necessary to get to where I need to go? That's a tough question. Now, it's easier asked than it is answered. It, but here's what I know. Everything worthwhile is uphill. It's uphill all the way. You don't get there accidentally. You don't get there by coasting. You get there by being intentional. You get there by paying the price, by counting the cost and paying the cost. The results come at a cost. There's a price to be paid. Every year, I think we need to sit down and we need to count the cost of what it means to grow. What am I going to do this next year? What's it going to cost me to grow? This is a principle that Jesus taught. And, And I think it's something for us worth revisiting as believers, as Christ's followers, to understand that Jesus didn't say, hey, just come and sit and just enjoy and kick back and put your feet up and have an umbrella drink and and everything's going to be fine. He, He says, no, there is a cost, there is a price to pay for being a disciple of Christ. Listen to what Jesus said. In Luke chapter 14, there were large crowds that were traveling with Jesus. Verse 25, and turning to them, turning to the crowds, Jesus said, if anyone comes to me 
and does not hate father or mother, wife or children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Now, we can get into what the word hate means. He didn't mean like literally hate them. He's talking about a priority thing. If you put anything or anyone above me, you're not willing to pay the price. And whoever doesn't carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Now, he's not talking about wearing a nice little gold, beautiful little gold piece of jewelry. He's talking about crucifying ourselves, dying to self. If you're not willing to carry your cross for his sake, you're not worthy of being his disciple. He goes on in verse 28. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? If you lay the foundation and you're not able to finish it, Everybody who sees it will ridicule you, saying, this person began but wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he's able to, uh, is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming at him with 20,000? If he's not able, he's going to send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. He's going to settle out of court. He's going to be like, hey, I did the cost, I did the cost analysis here, and we don't, have, we don't have what it takes in order to get there. He goes on, he says, in the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. He's just asking, are you willing to pay the price? Are you willing to do the hard work? Are you willing to pay the cost? There is a real cost in being a disciple of Jesus. Don't let anybody sell you on anything less. It's not just about coming and singing some great songs and enjoying some great donuts and coffee and having a great building and having a great fellowship of people. It, it's, that's a great benefit, but that comes at a cost. The cost of being a Christ follower. I think that's part of the immeasurable value of, of, of the church getting together, of the church being together, in fact. Because it's a chance for us as we're sharing with one another, telling stories of the wins that we've had, of the losses that we've had, of the victories, of, of the price that we had to pay to have those victories. And, and I think we need to share those stories with each other. And every year it's necessary for us to count the cost, to ask, am I in Am I in? You may have said yes to Christ at some point in your life, but that was not a one-time yes. That is a daily yes. That is a weekly yes. That is a monthly, annual yes that you need to make. Am I willing to pay the price? Being a Christ follower is not very complicated. It's actually very simple. Now, it's not easy, but it's very simple. You've got to replenish your price pain. Because if you're not willing to pay the price, you're not going to get to where you need to get to. Do you have the reinforcements? Do you have the accountability? Do you have the boundaries? Do you, do you have the clarity that you need? The success that we enjoy or the successes that we want will come at a price. It will come at a cost. And the willingness to pony up and to pay that price of our time of our abilities, of our finances, it comes asking this question and counting the cost before we start on the journey. That's the question to ask for. And here's the next, next question to ask, is what are your big goals? What are your big goals? Now I know we talk about New Year's, resolution, New Year's resolutions and a lot of people think about and they talk about goals. We, we have the when it comes to that, we have the propensity for more and bigger. So we have big eyes and big dreams and big appetites for more. But my challenge to you is to focus in. And I would not have more than three, maybe four big goals for 2023. Now, you can have some sub goals under that, little, you know, little subheadings of things that you want to get done. But I wouldn't have more than three or four, maybe, maybe five. I don't know. But, but, but here's, here's the reason. Here's the reason. You, you can't focus when you have so many things. I think you got to get start to get a little more laser focus. You can't just say, I want to be a better Christian. I want to be a better spouse. I want to be a better person. I, I want to make more money. I want to do more things. I want to serve more. I want to give more. I mean, I, I think you got to hone it down. What are three 
maybe four goals, big goals that you have, things that you're going to focus on. You say, this is what 2023 is going to mean, mean to me. I, I think we have to get clarity on those things because if not, we're easily diverted. If you've got a million different things, you're going to be chasing stuff all over the place. And the more focused you are, the more productive you're going to be. Too many priorities means that you don't really have any priorities. And right now, journey is going through a season of resetting, of recalibrating, of rebooting. And so we're going to be refocusing on how do we reach more people more consistently and more effectively? And how do we grow people, not just gather attenders? Those, those are two things I know for sure that we're going to be focusing on. How do we turn an audience into an army? How do we, how do we turn a gathering into a scattering? How do we make disciples, not just attenders, not just people who, who just want to come be, be a part of things? How, how do we develop what Jesus called us to develop? D- disciples who are learning and are growing and are giving and are serving and are leading and are influencing. Those two things, and like I said, maybe we'll add a third, I don't know, but those are two things for sure I can tell you right now on the first day of this year that we're going to be focusing on, that I, I want to help raise the awareness raise the accountability on those things, raise the challenge level, raise the, make sure that everybody knows the cost of what it's going to take for us to get to where we believe God wants to take us. Now here's, here's the last thing. Last question as we look forward. And this is just maybe a question that, that you're going to need some time kind of thinking through a little bit, but, but what habit will aid you the most in getting to where you want to be and getting to where you believe God is calling you, what habit, what's, what's something that you need to do on a daily basis that will change and get you to where you need to be? Because here's what happens. We have uphill dreams, but we have downhill habits. So, so what are the uphill habits that you need to get you? The secret to our success is found in our daily habits, what we do every day. And it's just asking that question, what's one small step that you will take today? What's one small step that you could start working on and working on and working on and do consistently and let that consistency compound over time? What one habit will aid you the most, will help you the most? You know, it's said that nothing in your life will change until you change something that you do every day. What are, you, what are you doing every day? Because that consistency begins to compound and it begins to grow and build on, its, on itself. And you'll never get to the goals that you want. You'll never get to the dreams that you want, the aspirations for the new year that you have, all the fresh ideas that you have. You'll never get there if you don't change anything. Because we are perfectly designed to get the results that we're getting right now. So what are the spiritual habits? Is it solitude? Is it prayer? Is it fasting? Is it Is it quiet time with God? Is it connecting with others in a small group and connecting with somebody else on a regular basis, some kind of accountability and encouragement group that you can get together with other people and be like iron sharpening iron? Is it journaling? Is it listening? What is the habit that will aid you the most? Because if you don't change, you'll always get what you've got. got You get what you've got up to this point because we are perfectly designed to get the results that we're currently getting. And you're not going to change something that you haven't identified. You're just going to keep doing the same old things all the time. So there's a bunch of questions right now. I've taken way more time than I was planning on it, but I I hope that they will help you to prepare. And I know that they actually will help you to prepare, but they won't get you to where you want to be unless you have a plan. See, there's a difference between preparing and being willing. Anybody have unused gym equipment, a treadmill that is used as a coat hanger, uh, you know, weights that are holding doors open or things like that, that that are holding down stuff? There's a difference between deciding and, and doing. You, you've probably heard the story about five frogs that were sitting on, on a log and three of them decided to jump off. The question is asked, how many were left? Now, most people will say there's only two left. But the real answer is that there's five left. 
because there's a difference between deciding and doing. So let me ask you, what is your growth plan? What are you deciding to do to let God work in you to increase your impact, to increase your influence, to be, become a, a, a river, not just a reservoir in 2023? What are you going to do to take action? What are you going to do to be consistent all year long? Galatians 6, verse 4 and 5 says, Each one of us should test our own actions. Then we could take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to somebody else. For each one should carry their own load. Listen, transforming the spiritual landscape of our community, making a difference and impact in this world, is not anything that any one of us can do on our own. We need each other. We need each other. And we need you to be on your game. We need you to grow this next year. We need you to stretch. We need you to grow. We need you to engage in God's mission of changing our world, making a difference, and sharing hope with people, adding value into the life. Make the most of this new year as we turn the page of a new year and do some internal digging as together we prepare for what God has in store. Let me pray for us. Father, thank you for the breath that you've given us to breathe in a brand new year. May we not take for granted or abuse the opportunities that are all around us. Would you fill us with fresh eyes and fresh hope and fresh ability as we freshen up our, our commitment to you in this new year, to be used by you, to make a difference in this world. We're, we're praying for big things in our lives and in the impact in the ministry of the church family that, that we call Journey Church. God, would you use us in ways that we can't even imagine as we sit here on this first day. And we promise you, when it comes to this day next year, when we look back, we will give you honor and praise and all the credit for the things that we see happening. But we, we want to prepare ourselves. Would you show us the next steps, the habits that we need to change, the discipline that we need to engage in, the people that we need to invest in as we step into the new year together and the opportunity that it holds in Jesus' name.